Welcome to the supplementary video of the call 2021 submission Urban Driver Learning to Drive from Real World Demonstrations using Policy Gradients. In this video we first briefly recap our proposed model and then show additional results in the form of videos. We tackle the problem of autonomous driving in urban environments, which is a very challenging problem among others due to the diverse situations our self-driving vehicle STV has to handle, the observed long tail of rare events, complex interactions between our STV and other agents, such as cyclists and pedestrians, but also traffic lights, and all this giving rise to the need for complex reasoning. On the right, you can see an example of such a situation involving multiple other vehicles and small and many traffic lights, but I'm sure you can even picture much more complex scenarios. Now in particular, this urban scenario is much more challenging than highway driving studied in literature. It is also not easy to capture via synthetic, scripted simulators used in state-of-the-art approaches. In our work, we approach the problem as imitation learning from expert demonstrations. This approach is a scalable way to learn driving policies without the need of expert cost tuning or defining perturbation models or similar. It is based on three elements, large amounts of collected data, mid-level representations plus a simulator and closed loop training. Each of them has their own challenges and we are the first to demonstrate how to combine these pieces together at scale. Let's see how these pieces fit together. We make use of a large data set of expert samples which have been pre-processed by a perception stack. Note that this is a prerequisite for our method and a general enabler for ML planning. From this, we construct a simulator working with mid-level feature representations, which we see is another requirement for building fast and scalable ML self-driving systems. This simulator is not engineered but directly constructed from collected driving logs. This avoids hand engineering and scales to very complex situations by the virtue of collecting data. It is also end-to-end -end differentiable, which allows computing policy gradients efficiently, which is important for large-scale training. Using this simulator, we train our policy in closed loop, meaning we unroll policies and update them. Our policy is parameterized by a graph neural network, making use of a point and cell architecture and attention layers. Finally, we can deploy our learn network to an STV. We now take a closer look at the used simulator in our training procedure. Our simulator allows unrolling policy and generates new episodes differing from the recorded log based on how the policy has changed with respect to the ground truth. On the left is a real-world log captured by an STV in the real world. On the right, we see the simulation of the same situation driven by policy. Here, in particular, our policy is decided to start driving on the intersection slightly earlier, but still in a safe manner. For training our network, we employ two steps, sampling from policy distribution and updating our current policy. From data, we obtain expert samples, but we would like to optimize over our model distribution. Thus, from such a starting point, we unroll for a random number of steps to approximate sampling from the policy distribution. Subsequently, we update our policy, meaning we calculate the loss and update our policy accordingly. As training on large-scale datasets is key for making the method perform well, we use an optimized version of policy training that takes advantage of the differentiability of the simulator. This allows us to scale to very large datasets. For that, let's look at qualitative and quantitative results. On the first slide, we show our planner handling a multitude of situations in simulation, highlighting the diversity and complexity of urban driving. In the following, let us take a closer look at a few of these. We begin by showing how urban driver stops for a red traffic light. In our visualizer, traffic light colors are projected to the lanes they belong to, crosswalks are indicated in yellow. In both scenes, we successfully stop at the traffic light. On the left, we have the first vehicle in line, on the right, we stop behind another vehicle. On the next slide, we see our planner successfully handling the traffic light switching from red to green. The STV starts and crosses the intersection on the intended route. Taking turns also is a common scenario in urban driving. Here we see how we handle two different types of turns. On the left, we see turning right on an unsignaled intersection. On the right, we follow a long left curve. On this slide, we show different interactions with other agents. In the left image, the vehicle cuts in front of us and we successfully slow down to yield. Then we nudge past a truck parked on the right side of the road, a behavior we also see in the right clip. All this also translates to actual driving on the road, as we show by deploying our planner to an STV in the real. As before, training was poorly done in offline simulation from collected expert driving logs. Deployment though took place in a new location, not contained in the training set, therefore proving generalizability of our method as well as applicability to real-world use cases without any SIM to real transfer or similar. On the top, we see the traffic situation through some of the mounted cameras. These images, as well as other sensor inputs, are processed by the perception stack, 
yielding a scene representation like shown in the bottom. This is then used as input to our network, and our planner outputs the future motion of the Eagle vehicle. The car thus is fully controlled by our neural network. In this first scene, our STV successfully crosses a busy intersection, first stopping for a red traffic light, and continuing when it turns green. On the next slide, we show the STV following a sequence of tight turns. In this scene, we have a different intersection and no lead car to follow. Lastly, here our planner correctly slows down to account for a turning vehicle in our path. Now let's compare our planner against some of the baselines. First, we present a table from the paper, comparing our method against several state-of-the-art methods for different metrics regarding safety and comfort. Our method overall performs best, as we can for example see on the lowest ill, interventions per 1000 miles. We know that all models exhibit an extreme number of comfort failures, as they are trained using notation loss alone, and we will show later how to combat this. In the first qualitative example, we see naive paper cloning failing, and slowly drifting off the road. This is expected as it suffers from compounding errors and covariate shift. Adding perturbations greatly helps performance. Still, in this example, BC Perturb miscalculates the starting vehicle and crashes, whereas our planner succeeds and keeps a safe distance. Also, multi step prediction miscalculates distances and crashes into traffic in this scene. To conclude, let's take a look at mixing in auxiliary costs, with which we can tailor certain aspects of performance. For the exemplary, look at the kinematic loss, penalizing high acceleration. Changing alpha, denoting the weight of the kinematic loss, we observe a trade-off between ilk and comfort. This is expected and further acceptable when within reasonable bounds. We note that our method is the only one to achieve such reasonable trade-offs, which is due to the fact that our method is fully differentiable and thus allows global reasoning over the induced distribution. In the first clip, on the left we have our original model following a lane, and can observe the noisy acceleration. By setting alpha to 0.1, this noise is nearly gone, and still we drive the scene perfectly. We can observe a similar thing on the next scene, stopping for a red traffic light. Adding the kinematic loss gives a nice braking curve and a good stopping for the traffic light. That has brought us to the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in.